I'm on this continuing quest to try and work my way through all historical innovations of humanity and work my way up from the Stone Age to the Modern Age. And right now, I'm just at the cusp of gunpowder with the procurement of saltpeter, a very crucial ingredient. But before the invention of gunpowder, you ever wondered like how good of a gun-like weapon could you make? I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into pre-gunpowder weapons and see how good of a basically machine gun-like crossbow you can make. This is a really common trope in a lot of different forms of media where you basically have a crossbow that is in the place of a gun. And basically in a lot of media, it's a stand-in for a gun in the time before guns were invented. I think is most interesting is that there's historical existence of this item. It dates back to roughly 300 BC in China with the Chu Konu. And used a really ingenious design to allow you to draw and reload a crossbow in one motion. However, they ended up having a lot of drawbacks, preventing them from really having any wide-scale use. Because of their design, the draw strength of them wasn't that strong. Strong. It also was a, a bit more awkward and bulky, so it was rather difficult to aim. So this found very limited application. However, some later designs did make some improvements against these setbacks. Large versions would be mounted on stands, such as depicted in this Korean painting. With the stand, it's easier to operate and aim, and with a larger size, a more powerful draw strength is possible. So I think that's gonna be my goal. Let's just make a pretty big one. But to get a little hands-on inspiration for this device, I did see that you can buy your own model of it on wish.com. So that's what I did. So it's a little bit smaller than what I expected. Um, the website made no mention of its size. Kind of a neat little toy, because it's two picks, apparently. The overall design is impressively simple. The single lever, when you draw forward, pulls back, and then when you release it, it both fires it and allows the next shot to drop down, which then when you draw back, it fires that one as well. So step one is gonna be making the stock of the body. And this is basically what holds everything together, holds the bow in place, allows the track for the uh, arrows to be launched from, and uh, it's basically what you hold on to. Starting first from a decent chunk of wood, the steel hardened chisels I made in one of our last videos will be very useful. The first step is gonna be carving out the rough shape of the body that makes it a bit more ergonomic to hold on to. Then, using the hand auger, we can start the hole that the bow will go into. And then the last part will be carving in a channel for the upper portion to slide down. Next, I need to construct some sort of stand to hold the body. The next step is going to be the, this upper portion or kind of an arrow holster. This is going to be the device that holds the actual arrows and allows them to drop down. So you'll be able to slide back and forth on the rail that we carved into the stock. Slot here for the bowstring to go into, including a notch that it gets stuck to. So then when the whole device is pulled back, it fires. First we'll start with the bottom of it that will be the sliding part that corresponds with the notch we carved into the stock. Then, putting together the sides for the box. Next, the notch for the drawstring.
right, so now it's time to do the prod or bow for the crossbow here. For our more traditional one, we did got a European style, which used a forged steel prod. Wasn't traditionally done much in the East. Instead, they often did a recurve bow or uh, bamboo. I did make a recurve bow before, but it's a bit uh, crispy now. So I'm gonna try and use bamboo. I'm gonna have a, a variety of different split bamboo here. They require a bit of finessing to get the right amount of draw weight. Generally, these did not have a huge draw strength, probably because you needed to be able to do the reloading motion all at once. Too heavy of a, a draw weight probably hinders that. It's just going to bundle them together at various lengths to offer enough resistance. We'll put it in the hole we put inside the, the crossbow. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Lavoit. Lavoit is the number one air filter brand in the United States and on Amazon. They sent me the Lavoit 600S. Now the workshop is finished, I've been able to use the filter in the new space. I was a little skeptical at first, because we do have a couple forms of dust collection and an air filter already to remove any sawdust and other particulates in the air. So I wasn't sure how valuable another air filter would be, but I actually found it to be really useful because one of the biggest health risks with work like this is the small particles get in the air and you end up breathing in. So it's really important to take care of that. Caught up in a project and sawing, suddenly there's a bunch of dust in there and not even realizing that I'm breathing it in. But the Lavoit system actually detects it and turns it on and starts filtering. Even nicer is the fact that it's synced to an app on my phone. It gets dusty in the room, I get a notification. And then when I should turn on the other collection systems or put on a mask. This is definitely going to be a really important tool in our workshop. Thanks again to Lavoit for sponsoring our video. Check out some of their products in the link below. And then uh, the last piece we need is the actual lever that connects the two devices and uh, is what is basically the firing mechanism. You can make mine out of steel so it's a little bit stronger. So let's start forging that. we'll need our ammo, the bolts. We'll basically use the same design as the previous set of bolts we made for the regular crossbow, except with some larger shafts to attach them to, which we'll attach by heat setting them. Then let's put the last few pieces together and see if it works. Alright, so we've got everything assembled here. At this one, we just got to put tension onto the prod here, and then we can see if it actually works and how well it fires. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Alright, let's test the draw strength. Same for over 50, so that's it's pretty good actually. So let's this goes out Up and draw fire, the thing you're not supposed to do. There we go. Alright, so I think we're all set now. I'd add some little Handle thingies here to help push the string out, but it looks like it's all set to fire now. We've got decent uh, draw strength to it, so let's take it out and start firing some stuff. See what we can do. So we'll just start with one for now, because there's a chance it might clog. Pull back. Right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> 
It fires. It worked. Got him right in the head. A misfire there. I think that's the biggest issue I see is they slide back so it doesn't hook onto it. So I probably just need to put a little block there to stop them from falling back that far. So far that's the only issue I see. And then it should fire. Oh, hit the tree. Definitely got some penetrating power there. And we lost our head. I right, so got a couple tweaks here that should hopefully get things to line up. So we got two boards on the edges. We kind of wedge it into the middle and just one at a time. And we have this block at the very end here. It should stop things from going and dropping in past the drawstring. Yeah, hopefully that should work out. Hopefully we can start loading that with a few more arrows. A little bit of alignment issue. Uh, the tip stayed up and it's just rammed into here. Two tried to go in at once and that wound up with it tilted up. So then when it released, it just jammed it to the front of it, not out the hole. A few more tweaks. Got some uh, shims in the front there to kind of force the arrows in one at a time. So hopefully that should address the last issue here and uh, we can get some consistent rate of fire. That was all of them, just one misfire. That is definitely an improvement. Say hello to my little friend. There's a long reach here. Oops. It's <laughs> a big boy. All right, so it took a little bit of tweaking, but I think I have this guy all set and able to fire repeatedly now. Fun device to shoot, and it packs some decent punch. I'm very satisfied I was able to get at least 60 pounds of draw strength with this. That puts it in the realm of a kind of a standard crossbow, a little bit on the low end. I think 100 pounds would have been really ideal, but the fact that it stood up to this and it's not too hard to cock and everything, I think is a good sign that I can actually increase it. And the advantage of doing it with the bamboo is it can just add more layers for more resistance and it kind of makes it a little bit more adjustable. As far as I can tell, this is a pretty accurate recreation of the one depicted in the Korean painting with the naval armament. And I'd have to say, I think this would make a pretty effective weapon to use in an actual war. Once it was uh, tweaked and ran a little bit smoother, it was to get a pretty, pretty decent rapid rate of fire. And with the increased size and on the mount, I was actually able to aim it pretty well. So I think in a stationary conflict where you're like stuck to the bow of a ship, this is a pretty effective tool. But this is just the first iteration. And I want to uh, try and kind of raise the bar even further, because this is not really a machine gun. This is just kind of semi-automatic. Like you still have to manually fire each shot. So the real goal would be to make this fully automatic, which is gonna take a lot more sophistication. And for that, I've been talking to someone who's kind of an expert at this, of Jorge from the Slingshot channel, who has made a few different versions of repeating crossbows, including the normal size version of this. Of course, he uses slingshot technology and elastic bands, which were not invented until the 1800s. So to try and do this historically is gonna require some extra challenges and uh, a little ingenuity. So I'm gonna consult with him, try and get some advice, and try and make this a fully automatic machine gun. Thanks again for everybody for watching. This is one of many different projects that I pulled at the beginning of the year to see what were people interested in. And this one ranked relatively high up there. Uh, moving forward, if you are a supporter on Patreon, I'm be kind of conducting small polls continuously allow you to input what projects I do and don't do. So look forward to that coming up and uh, you can have a, a little bit more say in the type of content we end up doing. Otherwise, thank you to everybody for your continued support. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.